Hey YouTube, what's poppin'? It's your girl Ashley and you are watching Grown Folk. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to know when I post videos, hit the notification bell. If you are enjoying this video, give me that thumbs up and definitely get your behind down in the comment section so we can discuss this fuckery we are about to view here together. And please remember, it never ever ever hurts to share. So... If you want to do so, please do. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so this video is going to really be just cut and dry and to the point because the topic of it is race. And race is black and white. It's really no in-between of it. It's just black and white. It's, you know, it's just what it is, damn it. I don't know how to be summing this stuff up for people that just like to be clueless in the dark and uneducated because it, it's just you can't spoon feed people forever so Jalal Jalil Adi excuse me Jalil Adi is or Adi however you say his last name is a football player that was out with his counterpart which happens to be a white female and all his homeboys which happens to just have white females too because all the women at the table was white if you looked at that situation and all the men was black. So the topic of this is not going to be favorable to Caucasian women because we are talking about the lowest of your society. So before we even get into this, I don't need no Caucasian women coming to my page, getting in their feelings or anything like that. Because again, I'm not talking about you as a Caucasian. I am talking about the lowest of your race, which is these type of women, which is something you should not be proud of yourself because we are not proud of our hoes that are black. So you shouldn't be proud of them hoes because these are like literally paid hoes. I don't know why people stay confused about society and the antics they play. So, this man was enjoying his little scenery with his little family and his friends on Grammy Weekend. And his fiance made a retarded ass toast. Now, it wasn't the fact of the toast that she made for the people that I ain't even spoke on this subject yet. But already getting in my inbox talking crazy because you know I'm going to make a damn good point, And you just don't want me to make it. It's being made, bitch. It's being made. Now, the problem with this is, had she sat there and ate her fucking salad, we wouldn't have known. But she wanted to put that on her social media alongside hashtag more light skinned babies. Now, that's when you stepped your ass out of what the fuck are you doing, white girl. That was unnecessary. Like, you knew that was not going to set well with black people and if you did not know you don't need to be with a black man because you cannot lead your children which at the end of the day is black no matter what they black okay white officers are not going to say oh you only got you know half black so i'm gonna treat you halfway right no bitch your boys your sons that you birth they're gonna get treated like a black man so you are not equipped to raise those black men, you showed us through this fucking text message, okay? Cheers to more light skinned kids. Cheers to more light skinned kids. Cheers to more light skinned kids. Now, the main question that I've been getting is, what's the problem with you guys and the anger you have when black men love white women? And part of the answer is this. Y'all asses pipe the fuck down. Nobody is angry about this man skeeting off or marrying you guys because they are still being with Tom, Dick, and Harry and Susie, Julie, and Kim down the damn street. Nobody cares to lose those caliber of men. As well as every time a racial subject is brought up, it is not centered around the disliking of a Caucasian white woman. And it's really absurd for y'all to really have that disdain and feel that damn boyish and important about your damn selves to make it as such. It is clearly about the disliking 
that the black man may have for himself and the miscommunication between him and the black woman because you should not have been allowed sitting at a table full of black men. It was at least three and a half black men at that table because I don't know what the one in the red, if he was all the way black or not. I think he was mixed, but I'm not sure. But I know I counted three black men at that table and you nor now woman should have been allowed to say that if it is under the pretense of, hey, I want to have light-skinned babies and not dark babies like the dick I'm riding. But it's okay to ride your dick. It's okay for that because you come with a check. But anything else, God knows I don't want to birth no dark-skinned babies because that shit right there is too much. I just want to ride the dick that's connected to the money. And that is the anger we have because we fight for you motherfuckers when you don't fight for yourself because that in itself should have disgusted that man. The question should have been to him, okay, so if our baby was dark, the fuck, I'm dark. What, what would be the problem if our son would have came out the same color as me? Why are you toasting to that? What the hell was the discussion that that shit was allowed to be said? And now man of color got upset at that. Society shouldn't have had to tell him nor her that something was wrong with that. So what people do not understand is just because you can ride a dick, a black one at that, don't make you, you ain't racist, okay? Slave masters used to screw and rape all that shit like on a daily damn basis, men and women. That didn't mean, you know, that just, that just meant that mm, I'm not even going to get on that subject. But it didn't mean that they wasn't racist, okay? It didn't mean that, okay? Now, what I'm about to show y'all is prevalent in too many men that are in a high-tax bracket that happen to be African-American because it's very disturbing, but it is exactly how a lot of them think. I wrote you, white man. I want to be with a black woman. Why? Because I was forbidden from loving you. I couldn't look at you or else That's I was what made me want it even more. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> oh, I can't have you. Look at this. I'm gonna control you. See this, look at this. Look at this. See, this terrible. Y'all look terrible. <laughs> just, 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 but I mean, we but, joke, but these are the real things. It's real. One of the reasons real. why black men, it, white women are looked at as success. Because yes. in, in America, we see a white woman, I couldn't have you. My daddy uh -huh. couldn't have you. My granddaddy couldn't have you. Uh -huh. I would get killed even looking at uh -huh. you. People, if they thought I whistled at you, they would murder me, uh -huh. beat me, uh -huh. drag me down the street. Uh -huh. So now, if I play for the NBA, I want them all. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'll tell I, you this. and I can afford them all. That's, yeah. what, that's what they're thinking. And the sad thing is, that has to do with the slave master mentality. It does. Because but we're... At, but we're we're superseding it. No, no, yeah, no. I, it's it's it's. I was your slave for this long. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna take your woman, and cause mm -hmm. your woman always wanted me. Mm -hmm. She all she always dreamt about. Well, me. She had you she, in the yeah, barn. Yeah, but that's what I think because she it was snuck and had you because anyway. it was forbidden. Mm -hmm. It was forbidden. So therefore, mm -hmm. now that it doesn't have to be forbidden, mm -hmm. I'm gonna show that I'm the superior being. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm the the dominant original man, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna act within that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that's why I believe at times we like yo when once you get money, once you get success, once you get... Now, I'm not following anyone else's rules. I'm going to love who I want to love. And the interestingly, interesting part about that is we don't want to sit here and say, well, the black woman was raped. She was murdered. She was lynched. She was dismembered. She did all these things. My child, I couldn't look at my child or sell them to another plantation. They tarred and feathered me if my woman showed any love to me. And to this day, the to black this... woman is still the most mistreated Absolutely. person on right. the planet. Exactly. And you're telling me we went through all these different things. By the way, the white woman was largely part of that. Right. Uh, literally. She would help to rape the black man. She would help to buck break us. She would help to sell uh, those of us into other plantations, etc. So you're telling me the black woman who has been there for us the whole damn time right who was there when us when we were getting lynched who was there for us when we were getting whipped every day who was there for us to heal our wounds to give us consolation of mind to bring us peace and quiet of mind to help us to get through another day right you telling me she doesn't deserve at least and i'm not saying after the brothers y'all like man i tried <laughs> hold on listen listen you didn't try enough goddamn. <laughs> right. just like hold on brother come on if it's if you can give up on a black woman so easily you don't deserve no other woman because you have demonstrated that you can't give enough love to the number one who needs it the most mm. because she has been destroyed the most mm. she has been rejected the most she is the number one number one divorced last married most mistreated and you telling me Facts. that because now you have money 
Mm. Now I'm free to go mess with the same white woman who helped to keep me in slavery. Same white woman who helped to remove the black woman from the home because she needed numbers to help to get rights from her white man when we were together as a black family to fight for civilian rights. Okay. You telling me you got some goddamn money mm -hmm. and you just going to go give it not to the black woman who has been there for you, who you have invested in and she has invested in you, mm -hmm. but give it to somebody who has no connection to your own damn race, your ethnicity whatsoever. Because when you are marrying, when you are coming together, you are coming together with the culture, mm -hmm. with the people. But now we're talking about too many selfish black brothers, mm -hmm. selfish, who want to come together with a white woman as an individual as though she is the epitome of greatness. She's the most beautiful. She has the best hair. She has the best everything. No, I think I take some some brown sugar over some white cancer causing sugar any day. I can't have both. Now what a lot of people are getting confused is what's being talked about as a whole. No one is hating on a union of a white woman and black man together or the birth of mixed children. I'm sure we all got mixed children in our family. I have plenty of cousins that are biracial. As well as nobody is picking on Jaleel nor his fiance. The problem is the disgusting tone in the comment. Now the comment was said by somebody at the table was not said by Jaleel and it was co-signed by his fiance because she is the one that put it on her social media which is not cool. Now that we got that all out the way that we understand the logistics of the whole situation let's get to the nitty gritty. I played that clip with Nick Cannon because he said something that really stood out and is a disgusting honest truth of some men that definitely started making a lot of money and it was that white men or white women are the the theme of success that is when you get up there oh let me get a white woman on my arm because that's gonna show i made it not only to my people but white people as well but because for whatever reason white women saw that in a good light you didn't see a drove of them come out and say hey yo nick that's sexualizing us that's saying that you know Hell, we, we really ain't worth shit. You just gonna be with us because it seems to be a trophy in society. Not because this is the woman I fell in love with. But because she's going to make me look like the motherfucking man in front of my peers. Completely dismissing and leaving the woman that was there with him during the war in the trenches behind. But the most frustrating thing of it all is the annihilation of the black man and how he doesn't fight his own fight. Answer me this. You don't ever see no group of white girls or no group of white men encouraging their white women to come down in the hood and pick out the Tyrones and the Bubba's and the DJ's. You, you, don't, you don't never see that being encouraged. But as soon as the hood makes a football player, basketball player, a musician, they make sure they line them women up. Hey, you got, you got the choice you got the choice of of this gorgeous caucasian woman what you want to be with the lakeisha's and the jaquanza's and all them back in the hood for and instead of him being like that's the woman that helped me get to this point he's like deuces bitch let me go pick up my amy let me go pick up my missy let me go pick up my april like it's just straight screw you let me buy you this blow mattress for you and my child while i go buy her a 10 million dollar home okay let's go down memory lane remember the movie living large it was a movie in 1991 a comedic film starring terrence tc carson also known as kyle from living single now this movie living large covered this in full detail it covered all the stereotypical types that they try to persuade situations like this with what some people just don't see in it living large was the original get out it was there before and it showed in death the fuckery in these types of situations now there are only two types of men well no we're gonna point out two there's a, a few more but we're gonna point these two out okay well actually three you have number one you have the buffoon all right that's the one that's gonna tap dance for his own people okay they're gonna make sure he's laced out in jewelry clothes and homes and homes are going to be rented under their name, but he's going to be able to stay in it. But they're going to let him keep the jewelry that can never be melted down and be the same value as he bought it. But, you know, jewelry, 
and um, clothing. He can have all that because it keeps him entertained. So that's what they're going to make sure he puts his money into. They're going to make sure they give him that and cars, all materialistic things that they can take back from him at any time they want. But they're going to give that to him. So that's the number one they try to try to make sure exists. Number two they try to make sure exists is the questionable sexuality okay they know good and damn well no strong black woman gonna be rocking with a dude that you know jerome them and and big dick tyrone them can um get if you send his ass down to the supermarket and next thing you know he in the alley with them niggas fucking they know good and damn well ain't no black woman about to put up with that shit but it is a whole lot of ambiguous women white women and thought pockets like black china she black so we ain't out of it too white women you see do you see i just said the black women do that too just just more of y'all but anyway and nobody's gonna put up with that so they will turn a black man into this shit you see upon your screen okay with no questions asked this is what they will do okay and then the next <clears throat> their most high enchilant men they're going to slap a white woman next to y'all and call it success. Now, despite the fact that Living Large was a comedic value movie, it told the truth from head to toe. All right. Now, the movie consisted of two friends, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, and a brother and sister. And this is all within their group, a group of friends. And Jackson had these grander dreams that he wanted to be a news anchor. And his sister really wasn't for it. She was like, stay in school. You ain't going to be shit, pretty much. And his boy was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And that only one person was like, baby, I got your back. You're going to make it. Pernell, don't be encouraging my brother in this childishness, okay? Nadine, you watch. This is going to make some money himself one day, and I'm going to be right there with him. Mm -hmm. Standing in the unemployment line. So after he begins to make it, you know, he loving life. He treating his girl. He treating his family. He like, this is the shit right here, okay? But then you got people lurking in the background thinking that like, you're not what I want you to be. So the completion isn't quite over. So the first time Kate steps to his face with that, you know, <laughs> you might want to lose Tornell. You know, she's not a good look for you. He checked her ass and told you, stay in your damn place and stay out of my business. So he goes on to continue to do his job. And he does stories that are wanted to be seen in the hood. This is Dexter Jackson, your man about town. I'm at the corner of Halston Street and Boulevard Northeast. Check it out. 911 emergency dispatch. Look, there are five guys laying here shot and stabbed. What's the location? I'm at the corner of Halston Street and Boulevard Northeast. All right, we got it. Look, can you hurry up, please? These five guys, they're laying here dying. Okay, let's wait. It's been over two hours and not even one patrol car has driven by to take a look at the scene. Check this out. I'm now at the corner of Fawn Glen and Bunny Rabbit Lane, and I'm about to dial 911 again. 911 emergency dispatch. There's a woman down here who has on high heels, and when she stepped up on the curb, she may have twisted her ankle. Oh, what's your location, sir? I'm at the corner of Fawn Glen and Bunny Rabbit Lane. I'll take a look down at the cul-de-sac. I'm going to all the way down to the end of the street. Have right you seen a woman here. around here with a sprained right ankle? How about over here? Is she a pretty woman? Very right secure. I'm Dexter Jackson, your homeboy about town in the heart of Atlanta. Now, Kate makes it very clear. Unless you're using the black hood, I can give two fucks. Don't bring me another story like this. And this is where... Kate and Missy have a good old conversation about prostitution down there because Kate just says, hey, Missy, go sit on the dick. 
And guess what Missy did? Still want to be a reporter, Missy? What are you saying? Seems Dexter's still clinging to the past. Do you know he's actually planning on marrying that toy now woman? I mean, at a time like this when he should be totally focused on his career. So what's that got to do with me? Plenty. If you can help me get his mind off toy now. Well, how am I supposed to do that? I thought you might be the person to broaden his horizons. Show him the candlelit side of life. Oh. Let's be straight. You're saying that you want me to... You know what? With Dexter? Forget it. It was a crazy idea. No, no, no. Kate, it's okay. I mean, after all, we're in this together. You mean you'll do it? For a chance of being a reporter? I'll fuck him so hard he gets whiplash. And so Missy took her orders and started talking to and flirting with a man that she couldn't even imagine herself with. Dexter! Dexter Jackson! Why did you stop? You look great out there! Come on. You are a terrific dancer. Harmon dances like a white boy. That's because I am a white boy, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Only to put the cherry on top to screw him as she always planned to because remember that's what her master told her to do. And then of course Cor Cornell catches them and next thing you know when he goes to work it's like she's in his seat getting to audition for a damn news piece. Now, wasn't that quite damn clever? And in the meanwhile, while this dude is beginning to listen to Kate by dissing his own hood, the people that had his back, he is beginning to feel a little crazy because he can see himself turning into a white man throughout his news footage. I don't believe she did. Yes, sir. Maybe I guess I deserve it. This has been Dexter Jackson at what? Elevators. Channel 4 News, your man about town. Tune in tomorrow for another exciting set crazy on inner city people. I don't... <laughs> Wait, I don't have straight hair. That's not my hair. Oh, what the hell is going on here? What is this James Brown shit? And fortunately, he finally gets his damn common sense and gets rid of all that stupidity. He has been thinking about ratings and all of this bullshit because they were trying to get him to marry this white girl you see before your screen and these racist ass parents because let's not forget how that white woman passed out it was like oh he kissed her hand it was like oh bitch should i have poked you should i have knocked you out would you have been feeling better than like i don't like stuff like that it was no reason for her to sit there <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with your ass get the fuck up so the gist of this movie show from beginning to end what they do when you get in a bracket that they feel, no, see, we're going to control you because you are to entertain us and nothing more, nothing more. Now, before I wrap this up, there was no mistake on showing y'all the body of work of Living Large. I use that movie because it shows you damn near step by step of how that industry, anything in a high tax bracket will change the men that come in that are African-American and just have a tad too much black in them and how they will whitewash it. And there's no difference in it today. That's why a whole group of white women felt nothing but comfortableness saying a toast like that in front of black men. But while on the topic, let's dive a little bit deeper in this subject. Damn, 
Now let's review. He said, I held Kim Kardashian by the throat, nigga. I made her swallow my kids until she choked, nigga. I should apologize. I shamed my folk niggas. This is to all those vice lords and folk niggas. Now, not only was we bitch slapped with the baby powder in the pimp hand for allowing J-Lo to sing a Motown tribute, but that a lot of you were very misled and disappointed in what the game was even fucking trying to say. This man literally wrote a song apologizing to you for going outside of his race no matter who the fuck he was talking about because we're not going to pretend like Car Kim Kardashian did not climb on the backs of many dicks to get in her spot we just not going to pretend that that ain't what it is I'm glad that it seems as if she's upgraded as well but still you climbed on many dicks to get where you are and you finally found what you thought Kanye's dick was gonna put you into the spot before y'all ran him batshit crazy but nonetheless this man made a song apologizing to the black women and to his homies that hey yo I shouldn't even been doing that shit like I should just be fucking with my black queens and you backward hillbilly confused ass don't know what the fuck to protest and don't know what the fuck to cheer on people. Instead, y'all said, oh, I know he ain't talking about my Kim Ye. Nah, please, not my Kim Kardashian and damn sure not my Kanye. Despite the fact that he vote for Trump and everything, he still Kanye as this man was apologizing to you and your race. For saying, yo, I did that side of my race. The fuck was I thinking I apologize black men and black women and you motherfuckers was more worried about absolutely nothing because you wasn't worried about j-lo singing at the grammys nobody protested that you now declared that you was only going to protest gucci for three months just three just a short three months and then this everybody got on top of game look everybody know kim being ran through so when you marry them caliber of women, don't then sit up there and act like the men, the minty men that ran through your woman before you are going to hold you to some standard because you put a ring on her. Because reality tells us that's not the shit. That's not how it works. That's not how it's going to begin to work. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with dirt ass, poor people or celebrities. So again, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that you see often something that is really not to be looked at as oh my gosh this is just appalled and da, 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 da. this is a select few in entirely too much select few but it's a select few of players that get up there and think and honestly think that their life will be much much better if they have a caucasian woman on their arm and if they are not strong enough and smart enough to realize the trials and tribulations that they go through just simply by making that decision or perhaps when they leave this white woman and she takes everything except for the draws that they are wearing on their back and the courts and may i add you the courts the same courts that said that the woman you birthed the children with needs to sleep on an air mattress while you put a, this woman in a 10 million dollar home those same courts is going to say no negro you owe her your life because you wouldn't be shit without her she takes care of the children she does this she does that and then he looking for somebody to hand him a handkerchief because he mad he listening for somebody to listen to him and it's like no sir you made your bed now lay the fuck in it and get the fuck on and go back to your side of town that's how they ought to be treated because that's just what it is because the society we live in today, a whole African man apologized to y'all and said, hey, y'all used to dip in females here and there, and those women were not of color, and I apologize to my black men and my black queens. And damn it, everybody was like, uh-uh, not be gonna be talking about my Kim K. No, I bet you won't. Like, missing the whole point of his song. Okay, if Kim was a hoe, she was a hoe. Who the fuck cares? But the man was apologizing to his race for getting out of pocket. And you simple sign, you know, just simple minded son of a bitches didn't even see any of it. So get down below and give me your thoughts. What do you think about the racial window of the toast that they made?
Do you think this couple being together as a family is a problem? Are you tired of seeing black women break their backs trying to get these men to these goals and then they are left behind on a continuous basis? Do you remember Living Large taught us this lesson long before there was a get out or long before this shit even came to be in everyday media? Do you think anybody should have been reprimanded after that toast? Or do you think had they let, left that petty mess off of social media, we wouldn't have even found out? And do you think black men fall for the okie doke of this all the damn time? Now let's get this discussion popping. Jump in the comment section and tell your girl what it is you're thinking.